Okay, so uh, any questions from you or there is a virtual applause going on here? here. Oh, that's good. So Nisha. Yeah. Hello, Nisha. <laughs> you can unmute yourself and please. Hey, Astrid, hello. Hello. <laughs> so I have um, a couple of questions. The first one is technical. But, uh, first, sorry, thank you very much. It was a really lovely presentation and uh, gave a lot of food for thought. And thank you, Rafaela. So my first question is more technical. What sort of camera do you use? An Nikon camera, a DSLR camera. And uh, so, and special lenses. I'm, I'm asking because I'm inter I'm interested. Oh, I see. No, sorry. Um, I'm actually using. It depends. Like I said, and sometimes I use this big lens, like the six and a millimeter. But it was only one case. In general, I'm using the twenty four seventy. I do use zoom lenses, not prime lenses, just to always have the the ability to zoom using also zooming as a moving part. Or I use the 70 to 200, which is also a lens I actually pretty often lose. These are my two to go lenses. Okay, I, I'm asking because I'm always afraid of, uh, I'm afraid of anything apart from my iPhone. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh no, you just have to carry a little bit more, you know. <laughs> Thank you. And then the, um, I, I really enjoy your thought process and I can, it, it feels like the work is a combination of being microscopic and macroscopic at the same time. Okay. There's, a, there's, because there's a macroscopic in that, okay, you see with the naked eye, but microscopic in that there are things hidden. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an interesting, it's like, it's like a dual for me. It, it brings, it brings it up. Okay. So microscopic. So thank you. That was, I really, really enjoy that very much. All right. And a, rem a reminder to to look to look more with just uh, your surface vision. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's also a little bit a learning process to see things, you know, to go through streets and everything a little bit more with an open eye. And I used to just bicycle through the streets and not looking but when you start looking a little bit more you're surprised what you can find it can be just a little thing in a corner really i agree with you and uh, <laughs> in you know working as a as a coach I, I think your you know work like yours and and that perspective is a, a wonderful springboard for people to be able to think more open-mindedly and to explore different aspects of the culture that they're living in. Yeah. So, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, please, Bob. Uh, can you just walk a, a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in case I will just repeat the question. I, I think so. <laughs> okay, well, thank you both. Just wondering if, um, before you found this method methodology, if you were attracted to abstract art, or is this something that you sort of appreciated uh, through this photography? No, I was always abstract um, attracted to abstract art. Actually, the way it drove, it's a little story as well, it drove also this type of photography to me as Abstract art is what I would put on my walls. I would, and as much as admi I admire portrait photography, landscape photography, but it's not what I would put on my walls. I would put abstract because my whole house is contemporary. So, so that was also driving a little bit. So when I started doing this, because I came here to Shanghai with two suitcases, nothing else. And so I had these empty walls in the apartment that I had to fill and I have so much art at home so I didn't really want it to buy more because I thought I don't know where to put it and I'm not exchanging art what I buy and what I get is what I want and I would want to admire all the time so I thought 
well, I just try and put them on the walls. And that's actually how it more got encouraged me and started the whole process. Yes. Have a question about sizes. About sizes of images. And uh, what kind of frame they use? Uh, the framing thing. Yes. Yeah, so Good the, question. So uh, just to uh, just to be sure that you heard the question because it's a little far. Uh, relation with size and with the framing of the. Perhaps you can just easy. There is a noise. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Okay, that's the question. So the sizes vary. Some of the images I can print really, really large, whatever you want. Um, others that where I cropped some areas out because I couldn't get close enough. There's a little bit size restriction. So the smallest size would be 60 by 60, but that's really the smallest. Anything else, a standard size, it is between by 90 by 139, but there are bigger ones and their possibility to enlarge them. And the framing, it's what I mean, I don't like a frame per se around my images because the patterns just go beyond and you can just picture it endless. So I use, um, a method that called diasac, where you, you are familiar with it, or just for people who don't know, it's you print on paper, you have backed aluminum, and then you put plexiglass on, do, on top. So that's a sort of sandwich structure. And the nice thing about the plexiglass is that it enhances a little bit even more the colors. Not understanding what the question is. Sorry. The relationship between uh, space and uh, patterns, maybe that's more more particular. Because basically, you're using um, pattern and with the technique like movie camera and also layering the patterns to create that special pattern. But then to give the illusion of three-dimensional spacing effect. Mm -hmm. That's my my activity. <laughs> It does in some in some images. That's correct, um, and I'm not really deliberately creating this. You know, particular because accident, accidental. yeah, particular the images you referred to, and I forgot to mention that I particular with this theory, there was no plan what to create, and because I was just in this stress situation, I just went out and shot images. And it was basically an emotional creation. So my emotion were driving the whole patterns. I had really no control over that. So it turned out three dimensional, but there was no, I don't have an intention on that one really. So I'm not thinking about it, but it isn't an idea to think about it in the future. Well, for the viewers. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. But that's a good, like we join at the same yes. time. Yes, yeah. Um, next question is one of the key pieces you just talked about. Um, I had to to based on it and I yeah. adopted in the, the art auction, the charity auction at Snow Space, the Chris Polygra. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's, you know, among all the 
images in the event show. That was attract my eyes. So with no desire to all this, <laughs> but I want you to maybe tell a little more story of the shooting and, and where and you know the places and, and timing and you know how you zoom into the eyes and you know like the process and, and the story behind it. Yes, I was actually looking through my photos to find a picture how it's been shot. And unfortunately, I didn't have any. It was, we were in a Zodiac. And yes, and it is actually shot with a, a think a 70 to 200 with an extension on it. So it was about a 350 because we were in the Zodiac, but you can't go close to the icebergs is dangerous. You have to have a certain distance. So we're zooming in as much as I could, but you still have a lot of piece of ice around it because I was just focusing on the certain pattern in the iceberg. So, so basically you need to picture a zodiac with six people in lying in the zodiac with a long lens and trying to hold still, which is not really easy and get the image, you know? That's basically what you have to picture. It is. That's why I'm working out to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have a question. You can turn it to you. Have you made any post-production at all? Because you mentioned the layering and movement, but for example, in one of the last images, really, uh, I was wondering because the blue that, that you can see on it, it's really, really strong. So how, how do you make this happen? So that is a really interesting thing because this it's from Jewel Box, so the, mm -hmm. yes. the one you mean. Yes, I mean, and I mentioned it in the beginning, I do post-processing and I sharpen and enhance the colors more than you what you normally do to bring out structures and colors that you don't see. Um, in this particular image, it was in, I had nothing, all of these images were really easy to post process. You just crank up the sliders and all the colors came out. I didn't have to do anything. So this grayish, what you saw, saw on the left side, um, in the mountains, when you enhance the color, it all came out in blue. It just happened, you know. I didn't do anything particular to it. Any other question here? Not yet. So I will start with mine that you already know because. Now, lately, what, I'm, what I started doing, since I am addic addicted to collecting things, I started <laughs> collecting from the artist list of books to read, because I think it's interesting to see. So usually I ask them to pick three books that really influence the, their works, and they can be novels, they can be art books, they can be whatever, because the thing is, and usually it's very interesting then to read them because you can understand them more. So that's the question. So I'm not inspired by novels or, or these things. Um, what inspires my work is three things. One is studying or looking at photo books. And I have one particular photographer who helps a little bit to make the transition from being a photographer, like what he calls the crafty. So you know all the technique, but to find the step from being a photographer, I mean, a crafty photographer, because a lot of photographers are artists, to make that step, meaning to make the step from just using the technique to develop your own design, your own way of expression. And he wrote two articles, one just describing the fact that people can be perfect in using the camera and everything, but not be able to give their own touch. 
And then he does in a second article saying, gives insp inspirations how to move from being a crafty person to being an artist. And then he has another book, where he, I think he's calling in um, inspiration for contemporary photography. And I use this one in the beginning more from the technical point of view, finding techniques to, to create abstract effects in your in your images but the combination then for me it's also reading the news and what is touching me most like with the environment the problems with the environment we're facing at the moment the pandemic then there there are so many things we need to address nowadays so it's for me then combining the techniques i'm learning about with what's interesting me, what's touching me, what I think you need to send a message out and finding a technique to express it. And then the third influencer are abstract artists. So learning from them how to express their feelings and send out their messages. So these are the three main sources I use for inspiration, really. Is that answering your question? Kind of. But <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I, I, in, lately, I got back to novels, and so I was really looking no, forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> okay. Any, but I will read them, you know, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, here, ah, Patricia wrote, wow, unmasking a kaleidoscopic vision. That's true. Okay. Patricia, would you like to ask? Oh. I cannot find. Ah, okay. So <laughs> just, just unmute yourself and ask the question. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm completely fascinated from this vision. I don't know if it's my catatonic state by being 4 a.m. awake. <laughs> awake. <laughs> this is really, really amazing. Um, I started to, to see some, um, you know, photograph like that in, in Japan, like long, long time ago. A friend of mine started like to have this kind of stepping into some kind of painted photography because you know when you start to blur the images you start to work them on photoshop but as, as less as possible just to preserve this kind of moment you 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 pretend to capture and then i see your work it's kind of wow i mean um, you've been of course just traveling quite a long places like uh, you know the from the desert to the to the ice it's, it's, it's amazing you have really a full range of uh, you know what's happening on the earth and I find especially touching that you try to combine this artistic uh, feeling and, and sense with a message a bold message about you know what's happening around in such a refined and, and delicate way I find it very very touching thank you so much Astrid thank you very much sorry Patricia uh, because you mentioned it at the beginning, you are in Europe, right? Yes, yes. Wow. In Germany. Thank you. Thank you for. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we say, we say uh, I'm from Spain originally, and we say, por amor al arte. I mean, you know, because of the art, you know, yeah. we, we would do anything. <laughs> it's very nice of you. Very much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Most welcome. <laughs> Nisha, you can unmute yourself. I see, yeah. Astrid, what, one more question. So when you started uh, work, when you started first as a hobby photography and then, then more seriously as an artist, what, what else were you doing for work? I came from a totally different field. I'm in the science field. I've been in business development for scientific equipment. I've been in the diamond business and been a part owner of a company. So totally different world. 
different but not different because i i think your your professional experience is um it manifests itself in your work so i was i was curious there's definitely a scientific aspect to it for me definitely that's a lot of people say that and it probably is yes and a lot of relation relationship um a lot of images about relationship that's correct well. yes yeah thank you thank you okay yes perhaps it, either you move or you raise your voice yeah should be fine my ignorance uh, in the field of art is vast and <laughs> <laughs> because by training I'm a political philosopher, so I find it more completely than planet. However, you know, I just wanted to make a comment on the series about environment and climate change because that's so important because you see it is so complicated to make some kind of how can I say communication of the impending catastrophe. And in general, when you when you see, you know, artists that are trying, let's say, to communicate climate change, they always end up in the aesthetic of catastrophe, you know. Well, since then here, I thought that your book is truly interesting because instead you you propose an aesthetic of equilibrium or balance, which is exactly, you know, the concept of balance and image that we would need to comprehend in order to stop what's going on. So it's not a question, but it's a comment. And, uh, because in general, it is also very important the role of us to communicate, you know, certain conditions that sometimes simply, you know, rational discourse doesn't, you know, doesn't present with the post that is needed. Well, what I try, even if I send messages and call outs, I always try to have it positive because I think, do I want something negative on my wall that I have to look? I want to, I want to surround myself with beauty and I want to feel comfortable. So I'd like to express it in a positive way, some, the way we want to be, although it is a critical topic. I don't want to be in a negative environment. So we're just saying we need, need to maintain, preserve, or put energy in to be in a positive environment. Any other question from the virtual living room? Not yet, not yet here. Maybe one more. Oh, okay, good. Wendy, unmute yes. yourself. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Hi Astrid. <laughs> Lovely presentation. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, my question is, do you um, shoot objects, nature, looking for beauty, or do you just see something that resonates with you and away you go? Because... In my own photography, I find I'm always trying to find something that is beautiful and I just can't, often I can't find it. Well, I think when you go out, no, I don't look for beauty. I look just for something that attracts. And nowadays, even more, I'm trying to look for pattern structures that help me to express a message or bring a message abroad but I always try to find colors or I'm not finding colors I try to express with colors that are as I mentioned feel make you feel comfort so if I can't find because I don't know how to work photoshop and I don't know how to put colors in an image so if the colors aren't there that I don't like then I just scrap the image. But a lot of times the colors come out the way I want it. So I would like to have the beauty, but in a pattern that brings over a message. That's, but I would like to say something here. Wendy is actually the person that made me to my first exhibition. And she is the one, and I break out in tears now, <laughs> no. she's the one that actually 
made me do the first step to show my images. Wow. Um, I think um, I, I think Astrid, I mean, like a lot of artists, I don't think people really look at themselves and understand, you know, I think it takes a while for that confidence. And Astrid invited me to her home once and I was taken back by the beautiful work on the, the walls and um, I said to her, wow, who's, the, who's your artist? It's fantastic. She said, that's me. <laughs> Uh, I take photo, photos and I said, this is remarkable. As, as one of the other women on the, the, the chat said, it's like a painting. It's photograph and, and merging painting and abstract. And, I mean, it really resonated with me. I, I know not everyone's into abstract, but for that it just was so moving. And I've followed Astrid's career quite a bit now and I keep um, checking in on your website and your Instagram and I can see how much you've taken it and it's just I, i'm just in awe of the work that you're doing so well done keep it up thank you very much I think to me is magic. I cannot explain it. But it is when you move the camera, and I don't know what is it might be the changing in the light and something that's how you bring out different colors than what you see. Because when you move, as soon as you move a camera, the light influence is changing. When you move the zoom, the light that comes into the sensor is changing. And that's probably how you create additional um, colors in there. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Any plans of working in Sweden? Because both of these are laying outside. I'm repeating for those. So he's asking if there, if uh, Asher has any plans to uh, start working in a studio. I mean, I don't have equipment for a studio. However, I do have some ideas in my mind where I really don't have to go out. I can just work in my own four walls. So I leave that when I have to go in quarantine, you know? <laughs> which will maybe happen soon. So. I leave it for that. But I do actually have a little bit, so I'm, I'm thinking of buying a smaller parts, not big ones. But yes, a few things I have in mind, but I still probably primarily will be outside, yeah. Um, okay. One more glance here, yeah. okay. I think we can say, all right, class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, usual. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.